Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube. Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to use an analog temperature sensor to turn on LED lights. So this is going to teach you a couple of concepts that are important in the Arduino world. The first concept is that output does not always have to be text. This is a big thing in the IoT world, right? We're used to whenever we deal with a computer, basically we have a keyboard, we have a monitor, maybe we have a printer. So we're used to looking at a screen and perceiving that as the output of the computing device. But the important thing to understand in the IoT world is you can have outputs that are very valuable to the end user that aren't necessarily something like a screen. And so that's why we're going to be using LEDs. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a temperature sensor. When the temperature uh, sensor reads the temperature that the room is supposed to be, you will get a green LED light. So the green LED light will turn on. Then if the temperature goes up, between a, a certain set of temperatures, a certain set of degrees, then the light will turn yellow. So basically what this would be simulating is let's say your server room. So let's say your server room uh, is supposed to be, I don't know, 70 degrees all the time. So when it's 70 degrees, it'll be a green light. But what happens if the temperature goes up to 75 degrees? Now 75 degrees may not be bad, it may not be the end of the world, but you may want to recognize that fact. Maybe you, have, maybe you need to clean out the filter and the air conditioner something like that. So basically, if the temperature reads 75 degrees, the LED will turn yellow to alert you that there may or may not be a problem. And then if the temperature goes too high, again, let's say a server room goes to 80 or 85 degrees, then the LED will turn red. So you know, oh, this room is absolutely definitely too hot. So this is an important thing to be thinking about. Again, like I say in the IoT world, is so many times we get so focused on things like numbers. Again, if you think about uh, a thermostat, you know, knowing exactly is it 65 degrees or 66 degrees or 70 degrees? But something that you should be thinking about is, is that actually useful to the end user? If the temperature is 66 degrees versus 67 degrees, to me as the end user, does that actually mean something to me? Whereas if I have an LED light that goes off, if I look and the LED light is green, all I care is that the temperature is within the range of green, right? It's green, I don't care if it's 68 degrees, I don't care if it's 69 and a half degrees, I honestly don't care if it's 50 degrees. It's green, that's all I need to know. Again, if I, if I look at the, uh, at the display and there's a yellow light, then I know, okay, it's warmer than it's supposed to be, but it's not, it's not horrible yet. And again, I can think, oh, I forgot to change the, uh, the air filter uh, in the air conditioning unit for the past couple of months. I probably need to go in there and change the air filter. Again, I don't care if it's 74 degrees or 73 degrees or 76 degrees. I just need to know that it's above the optimal temperature. And then again, like I say, if the temperature gets to 80 degrees or 90 degrees or something like that, I don't necessarily need to know that it's 85 and a half degrees. I just need to know, oh crap, my server room is overheating. I need to do something ASAP. And so that's one of the things that I'll be teaching you uh, with this particular video is again, that whole idea of how can you give information to the end user that may not be specific, but is actually far more useful. Also, one of the things that we'll be doing in this video uh, that we haven't done before is we'll be doing if, else if, else statements. So what this means is if the temperature is a certain set of parameters, then do this. Else if, if it's a different set of parameters, do something else. Else, if it's something that hasn't been talked about before within the statements, then do the final thing. And so we'll be using if, else, if, else statements here and this will be very valuable for you when you go build other Arduino projects. So with that, let's go over to Workbench so I can show you the components of how to build this thing. Then we'll show you the code and we'll show you actually having it work. So here are the main components that we'll be needing for this particular project. Of course, we're going to be needing a breadboard in order to plug all of this stuff in. And as always, we're using the Arduino Uno. 
Beyond that, we're going to need our nice little analog temperature sensor. So we definitely need one of those. Then we need three LED lights. So for this project, um, I am using a green LED, a yellow LED, and a red LED. If you are gonna be working with LEDs, do realize it's pretty easy to burn these things out. So I would recommend going on Amazon and buying the LEDs by the pound. Uh, but we'll need those three LEDs. And then to try to not burn the LEDs out, we will need three uh, 220 ohm resistors. So if you plug an LED directly into one of the digital pins on the Arduino board, it will put out enough current that it will literally burn out the LED so quickly you will not even notice it got burned out. So if you don't use these resistors, you're just going to burn through a lot of LEDs. So do make sure you definitely have 220 ohm resistors. Resistors. So when you have those components, then all we're going to do is put the thing together. And so it's going to look a little bit something like this when you do this. So we have the breadboard as always, and then we have our analog temperature sensor here. So this analog temperature sensor, remember the flat, the flat, when you look at the flat, so when the flat is facing you, remember when it's facing you that the left pin is positive, the right pin is ground, and the middle pin is sensor. If you swap those around, you will burn out uh, the analog temperature sensor. So be careful of that, make sure you're doing it properly. Uh, then beyond that, we then have our LEDs plugged in. So what you're gonna notice with the LEDs is obviously we have the LEDs plugged in as such. Then we have the resistors. So what we do is we have the ground, so the ground is these orange wires and that's running to the ground rail, the negative rail, and we've connected the negative rail, the ground rail to the Arduino board. So we have one ground going to the temperature sensor and we have another ground going to the rail on this breadboard. Then the ground is then connected to the ground, the ground side, the negative side of these LEDs. For the positive side of the LED, for the positive LED sides of the LED, we have the positive side plugged into a 220 ohm resistor. That comes down to another line and then these are connected back to the digital pins that we're going to be triggering on the analog. So it's very important that the positive goes to the resistor, the resistor then goes to the LED, and we've replicated that on these, these other two LEDs here. And so this is basically what the project looks like once you've built it out. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code. So here is the code for this particular project. If we go up, we're going to define a number of different pins. The first pin we're going to define, so pound defined, is the sensor pin. So this is for the temperature sensor, and that is gonna be analog zero, A zero. Remember, if you're doing analog pins, uh, you have to actually put the A in front, so A zero. Then we're going to define the three LEDs. So the green LED, the yellow LED, and the red LED pins. So define green LED, that will be digital pin A, define yellow LED, digital pin 9, define red LED, digital pin 10. So this is where we're going to be defining all of our pins. We need those four pins defined. Then we're going to go down to set up the environment uh, for this uh, the script to run in, the sketch to run in. And so since we have these digital pins for the LEDs, then we have to use the pin mode functions to set those pins to output. Do you remember with an analog pin, an analog pin is only used for input, therefore you don't have to set what it's for because it's only ever going to be for input. So we're going to do pin mode, then we're going to say green LED, we're going to put that to output, pin mode yellow LED, we put that to output, pin mode red LED, we're going to put that to output. So we've put these three digital pins to output. And then, so that we can read from the serial monitor, so that we can actually see the temperature that the analog temperature sensor is reading, you're going to do serial.begin9600. From here, we're gonna go down to the loop. And so this first part of the loop is all the horrible, god-awful math uh, that's required in order to, to give us the values for the variables that we're going to be dealing with. Again, this type of math, it's just, this is just the equation. Uh, you can try to figure out why all of this is, or you can copy and paste, but this is what you're gonna, what's gonna be required if you're gonna be using an analog temperature sensor. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create an int for a variable, and that int is going to be reading. So int is a whole number, 10, 1, 20, 100, a whole number, and that's gonna be equal to the function analog read of the sensor pin. 
So this function is going to do an analog read of the sensor pin, A0, and whatever that value is, that's gonna get put into reading. We then have a float. Float is a decimal point, 10.1, uh, 10 20.5, 30.97, right? So a float is any number with a decimal point in it, and so we're gonna create a float for voltage we're going to have that equal to reading times five. So reading times five is gonna be voltage. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this thing, voltage divided by and then equals to 1024. So we're gonna get voltage here. Then we are going to divide that number by 1024 and then set the variable voltage to that value. Then we're going to create a float for temperature C, temperature in Celsius, uh, voltage uh, minus, uh, 0.5 times 100, that'll give us our temperature in Celsius, and then float temperature F is for temperature in Fahrenheit, temperature C times 9 divided by 5 plus 32, that gives us temperature in Fahrenheit. Again, all of this is just math, frankly, copy paste it, move on. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to here is we're going to print out to the serial monitor so that we can see what the analog sensor is seeing. Serial, serial print the value of voltage, then it's gonna print out volts. Serial, serial print the value of temperature C, then it's gonna print out degrees in Celsius, then serial print temperature F, uh, then it'll serial print line, so it'll print degrees F, and then go to the next line. So this is going to be printed out in the serial monitor. Where we get to the cool new stuff is down here, where we're actually going to be turning on the LED pins. This is the if, else if, else statement. So if, so if temperature Fahrenheit, temperature F, is greater or equal to 75, so if it's 75 and above, what we're going to do is we're going to digital write green LED low. So this turns the green LED off. Digital write yellow LED low. This turns the yellow LED off, and it'll digital write red LED high. So that'll turn the red LED on. So if the temperature is greater or equal to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, then the red LED will be on. Again, you can change this number to whatever you want it to be. Else if, this is where it gets a little bit interesting with these, these if, else if statements. Else if temperature F, the Fahrenheit, is greater or equal to 70, and, and, so it's important. So both this condition and temperature Fahrenheit is less than 75, then do the rest of this, right? So we've already said if it's over equal to or over 275, turn on the red light. So what we need to say, if it's greater than 70, greater or equal to or 70, and less than 75, then do this. So what we're gonna do here is digital, digital right, green LED, low. So we turn the green LED off. We turn the yellow LED high. We tell turn that on. And then we turn the red LED low. So we turn that off. So if it's greater or equal to 70 and, that's important here, and less than 75, then we're gonna turn the yellow LED on. Else, so if neither of these conditions are true, then that means the temperature is good, so the green light should be on. So digital right, green LED high, so that turns the green LED on. Digital right, yellow LED low. Digital right, red LED low, so that turns it off. And then of course we're going to delay here I've got it set for 3,000 uh, milliseconds, um, so three seconds. You can set this to whatever you want. I just set it to 3,000 just to make it easier uh, to be able to, to see what's going on with the uh, with the little device once I set all this up. So that's basically how all of this is written, and then all you're going to do is you're going to upload it uh, to the uh, to the board, and then see how it works. So with the sketch uploaded to the Arduino board, we can go to Tools, we can go to Serial Monitor and we can see what the Arduino board is reading. So currently, as we can see, it's now reading a 19.34 uh, degrees Celsius or 66.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we set it at is if it's equal to or above 70 and under 75, the green LED will turn on. If it's above 75, the red LED will turn on. And so obviously, if no, neither of those are true, it is below 70, then the green LED light will be on. And as you can see here, the green LED light is on. So then if I simply put my finger on top of the temperature sensor, we're gonna see this go up to 69. And then from here it goes to 72. And now you see that the 
yellow LED is on and the green LED has been turned off, the temperature should keep going up. It was up to 74. And then there, at 75 degrees, the red LED light is now on and the other two are obviously off. If I take my finger off, then the temperature will start going back down. Now we see the, LED, the, the yellow LED is on, and then in another couple of seconds, it should go below 70 degrees and the green LED will come on. And there we go at 7.32 and, oh, it does take a second here. There we go, 69.44. Now the green LED is on. And so basically that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with this particular project. So you can set these numbers, these statements to be whatever you want them to be. Again, you could have it be above 90 degrees turns the LED, red LED light on, or you know, above whatever else. But this basically just shows you how you build this board and then how you can do the if else if else statements to be able to trigger the LEDs to turn on. So that's all there is to this particular project. We use an analog temperature sensor, we read from the analog temperature sensor, uh, turn that value into a temperature in Fahrenheit, and then once we have a temperature in Fahrenheit, we are able to put that against an if, else, if, else statement and uh, be able to turn on LEDs. It is important to be thinking about with projects like this is whenever you do your project, it doesn't have to be designed in the exact same way. Again, when you're dealing with LEDs, there's lots of different LEDs out there. Like this is a blue LED. There's all kinds of colors. There's white LEDs, all kinds of colors. And so something to be thinking about with the temperature is what we're doing here is we're tracking to see if the temperature gets too hot. So again, you're thinking about something like a server room environment. If it gets too hot, then you want to be alerted. But if you're dealing with some other type of facility, maybe you want to know if the temperature gets too cold right so let's say you have a basement or if you have an outside facility that has something like it contains some kind of liquids or it has some kind of water pipes in it so you want to know if it gets I don't know maybe below 34 or 33 degrees you know because if it gets down to 32 degrees liquid can start to freeze so you may want to know hey if it's getting below you know the 34 or 33 degrees you may want a blue LED light to turn on to say hey this room or this environment has gotten too cold uh, and therefore you should also do something. And so that's what's kind of cool about this particular project is the whole idea of taking a sensor and then not simply putting the sensor output to some kind of number or some kind of basically uh, writing to a screen, but the idea of being able to trigger some kind of visual indicators so that people have a better idea of whether something is, is good or bad. Again, being, having, being somebody that's worked in server rooms and that type of thing. I mean, you you instinctually know what the temperature is supposed to be. It's like, yeah, the temperature is supposed to be below 75 or whatever. And then you walk in and they're like, yeah, it's kind of warm. And you see the temperature and it's like 80. But again, it's just a number. You're not thinking red. You're not thinking bad. And so you just kind of shrug your shoulders and go on. Whereas, again, if you had a temperature sensor and it's red, then your little help desk person, your desktop support person, might go up to the uh, might go up to the head of the department and say, "Hey, do you do you know the red the red indicator is going on in the server room?" Again, the server room if it simply says eighty degrees, right? The the desktop support person, the server person might look at it and shrug their shoulders and keep going. Whereas if it's red, then they may go, "Hmm, hmm maybe I, maybe I should tell somebody about this. <laughs> maybe." Maybe red is bad. Hey, is that supposed to be red? Ah, no, it's not supposed to be red, right? So these are some of the kind of things that you, you should be thinking about is again, not just simply how to get the information from the sensor, but then how to deliver information to the end user that's actually valuable and that they feel that they can take actions against. So that's all there is to this particular project. As always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you at the next one.